Hello again, everyone. This is Mark Oswald alongside Bill Bowman, president of Aegis Financial, mm -hmm. CPA, and winner of the 2021 Best in State Wealth Advisor from Forbes magazine. And Bill, just want to give another update to our clients on what's going on at Aegis Financial and what we see is going on in the markets. Yeah, the markets have been completely amazing. We're up another 200 points since the last time we talked, <laughs> and it just isn't stopping with the amount of stimulus that's being poured into the market. You get into the psychological numbers, you know, saw the NASDAQ now at 14,000. Those are getting to be heady numbers, but you think about these 5% gains that we've had since the last video, you really have to think about what's driving that. And I think that that's the important takeaway today is part of it is a stimulus, part of it is the idea of people just coming back to work that's and right. the economy taking off again. Yeah, people are, have money to spend and they're, they're sick of being home and they want to get out and do things and resume normal life. And we're just seeing that over and over again, uh, especially with the sales numbers for last month. They've just been amazing. A 9% growth over last month is expected to be 6%. Just a tremendous beat up on the sales side. You know, I saw a number this week that really just blew me away, which was, you know, Jamie Dimon, who's the head of J.P. Morgan, said that there's as much as $2 trillion sitting in savings accounts at banks. Mm -hmm. You think about that money is ultimately going to come into the economy as people get back out and go to restaurants and start to travel again and things like that. And that's very supportive of the economy. Sure. So this, uh, this isn't the end of the growth. We actually see uh, see more growth throughout the rest of the year. We think the second half of this year is even going to be better than this first half. See, that reopening trade where the economy coming back online is going to be really important. But right. let's look at the medical piece of it as well because the vaccine numbers are starting to be very encouraging as mm -hmm. about 23% of Americans now have been fully vaccinated. That's right. And again, if we get to the concentration that we're looking for, it again supports opening up the economy. One other thing that we need to look at is the idea of inflation, right? I mean, the idea that maybe this thing starts to run a little too hot and the Fed might step in and do something that would curtail the sure. advancement of the stock market, but we don't think that's gonna happen this time around. Yeah, the Fed has said over and over again, if they stick to what they're telling us, that they're gonna let the economy run hot and hold off on raising interest rates for some time. In fact, they're talking about well into 2022. So if that continues to occur, money is cheap, and that $2 trillion, will be put back into the market. And that could be very good for stock companies. You think about retail sales and the consumer spending, about 70% of GDP in this country is people just going out and spending. So right. we'll, we'll keep an eye on that number for sure. The other thing that's happening right now, of course, is earnings season has kicked off mm -hmm. and it has kicked off with a bang. Yes, the financials in the market have really shown some upward movement, beating expectation very handedly over the, the cycle here. You look at the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the United States, and FactSet, which is a company we follow as a part of our investment committee, is predicting that we're going to beat earnings by a whopping 28% on a year-over-year -year basis because the comparisons just got easier because we're comparing to a quarter now yeah. that contained a, a COVID quarter. Yeah, yeah. The, with the economy being closed in the prior year, these numbers should continue to be uh, in excess of what we would expect. So we want to be cautious. Mm -hmm. We're prudent investors taking care of our clients' money. But think about the contingency planning that we're doing with the investment committee and talk a little bit about what we're doing in the short term and then what our view is for the longer term. Sure. Our short term, we still are, are very conservative with money being used. But in the long term, we're, we're looking for dips in the market as buying opportunities. We really think we have a couple good years ahead of us in the market, and we want to get as money in as quickly as possible, but as prudent as possible at the same time. So we've got the S&P 500 now at 4,000, and there's a prediction, at least from some people, that by the end of the year, you could be at 4,400 or 4,500. So there's still some room to go with this, with this market. That's the, that's the base case. We could even see higher numbers than that based on what's occurring with additional stimulus being talked about now. So one of the things in our practice, of course, being tax-efficient investors, is tax day came and went this week. The traditional tax day anyways. Sure. We've had an extension this year because of the COVID to May 17th. Mm -hmm. Are there still things that people can be doing right now to lessen the tax bite from last year? Well, definitely. Uh, we were just working with a client today to convert some of his IRA to the Roth uh, pay the tax this year because tax rates are going to go up next year. So there's definitely things we can do now before the end of the year. Great stuff. As always, we appreciate the time.